Well, I hope you enjoyed lunch. I thought it was great. I'll try not to uh, put you to sleep. Like I say, I'm going to try and keep keep us on task. The only thing that makes these things fun, you know, in the afternoon, you're saying, ah, it's Friday, I want to go home, or I want to go out of the park, I don't know. <laughs> whatever, whatever. <laughs> you're poisoned. Um, so uh, interaction is, is the way to go, and I like to foster that. So you know you can stop me if you want. Okay, just say, I don't get it, or something like that. I don't mind it. Um, but I'm going to go through some things. What I want to first off say is you know, this morning session, I think you should hang on to some of those PowerPoints. I think you should hang on to some of that information because it is very valuable. It's a lot of detail that helps uh, bring back those items that you don't always think about once you're sitting there going, OK, what am I going to do next? How am I going to write this thing? All this information is very important. And uh, Ms. Arnett, Ms. Wurike, and uh, Dr. Tamaka did a great job with that. Arnett, I'm sorry. Is it really Arnett? Yeah. OK, just want to make sure. <laughs> so um, <clears throat> I'm going to try and um, go through and, and give you a foundation perspective. Certainly. Uh, uh, the foundation perspective is similar to the, the information that you've gotten uh, from our early morning presenters. But we're going to just talk a little bit about what funders want to know, uh, what funders want you to know. I'll tell you a little bit about Paso Norte Health Foundation. I, a, a lot of you may know about us, but uh, you may have some questions as to why we do what we do and where we've been and where we're going. So I'll give you an opportunity to ask about that. And then lastly, I'm going to just kind of go over what makes a great grant. Uh, and uh, we'll close up for the day, and I'll just be around for questions as long as you want me. So what do funders want to know? <coughs> well, first off, we want to know, who are you? Who are you? So you know, when we say, we, who are you? We want to know, you know, reason for existence. What's your mission? What are you, what are you planning to do? What, what is it that you want to do about uh, changing the world? Uh, do you just simply, uh, your mission is to build a building in downtown El Paso. Well, okay, that's, that's great. Uh, who's, who's your support? Who are your board members? Uh, who's your staff? Do you have any? And, and how financially stable are you? Uh, many times funders are concerned about <coughs> the, the financial stability of an organization, especially when they're saying, I need a million dollars and their annual budget is 25000 there are significant concerns with that. Not so much that we're not respectful of the organization and its mission, but more so because uh, of accountability. And I'll explain a little bit about that more later on. We also want to know, what's the need that you want to address? You know, so when, when we're looking at things, we want to know what's the problem. What, what, what is, what is the, 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 the statement that you're making? Uh, do you have some current data about this? Uh, and, and when we say current data, do you have data? Uh, I mean, you can have state, local, national data. You can have just neighborhood data. You can have anecdotal data. Uh, you know, just tell us a little bit about you know what what is the need, and who's the target population? Who are you planning to serve? Uh, who is this for? And so, from there, what do funders want to? Uh, what will you do about it? So, you know, what are you going to do? about this? Do you have an action plan? Have you identified some tools? Do you have a timeline for how you want to get this done? How long is it going to take? Are you just starting up? Have you been doing this for a while? Let me know if you all can't hear me in the back, OK, because I don't know if my voice is <coughs> I may lose it. Then, of course, how will you know if you've done it? Do you have some kind of evaluation plan? Is it just, you know, it can be anything like numbers served, pre and post test, some survey data, uh, any number of things. I mean, we, 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 look at, uh, we look at things with an open mind and say, well, if you can tell us how that works and we can communicate it back to our board, then that's cool. How much will it cost? Okay, if you've got an idea, you know, we, you usually have a projected budget. And I'm, I'm, I think we're revisiting some of this stuff again. But uh, you've got an idea. You've got a pretty good idea of how much it costs. And if you don't, you, you may need to talk through some of this stuff and then realize there are what you call justifiable costs. I mean, uh, you know, how much is it going to cost to serve an individual? If you're going to put on a, um, an education program, say you're going to teach somebody uh, a nutrition class, and it's going to be a class that has six sessions, and it costs uh, $1,000 per participant, well, 
it might be better to just give the thousand dollars to the participant, have them find a nutritionist to, to follow with them. I'm not sure. You know, what what, is, what are they going to learn from the program? Is it justifiable to spend a thousand dollars? It could be. It could be. Relevant equipment purchases. If you're saying oh, we need to buy a Mercedes to drive people around town, you know, we're not beyond saying that that's a good thing. We're not beyond saying that's a bad thing. We say, like, why do you think this is necessary? And then other support. You know, if if you're clear on how much it's going to cost, and you already have an idea of, we already have something there. We already have something of value there. Maybe it's the organization's contribution, facilities, staff. Maybe it's leveraged resources. And what you're looking at from the foundation is this is the piece that I'm missing. So let's go over what funders want you to know. <coughs> we talk to each other. Believe it or not, we do. These are groups that uh, Boston North Health Foundation uh, is involved with. Many times we'll present at some of these group presentations. I think Eileen might have mentioned that earlier this morning, that we like to have presentations and talk about the programs that are going on in our communities. We learn from each other. So uh, there may be a chance that I have a good relationship with a program officer at Robert Wood Johnson or a program officer at Kellogg. And it's through these affinity groups that we get together and we talk about what it's, what's the latest, what's going on out there, what are people asking for, how are we addressing certain needs. So these groups exist, and they're pretty strong. Uh, we have annual meetings, and we do uh, presentations and, and have presentations provided to us that give us some of the latest data, some of the latest uh, programs that are on the ground, what's working with them, what's not. So we talk to each other. <coughs> we also talk to the community. We want you, uh, we like div diversified funding streams. We really do. You know, it, ultimately, you know, when, when we get to a point where you're so close to a breakthrough, saying, if only I had another year, if only I had another year. And we're going, well, this has been going on for 10 years. And two years ago, you told me if only I had another year. And then after that, you told me you had a, if I had another year. So we can support things. But many times, foundations' charters do not set them up to fund things into perpetuity. So uh, you know, we may say, look to the government. Well, the government doesn't do that either in many cases. So you've got to keep some diversified funding streams, keep some of those plans uh, up on the, uh, on the front so that uh, you don't lose. And we don't always fund programs for the sake of keeping a program alive. I mean, it may be, a new for, and I'll explain this a little bit more, but uh, it may not be the program that we're looking for. If the program's great and it's working, well, that's great. Uh, maybe we're looking for a sustained behavior and not so much a sustained program. It may not be a viable uh, a program to sustain for decades. So there's a lot of questions with that, but ultimately we like diversified funding streams. Well, I don't know why that slides back. Oh. Well, what we want you to know also is that <coughs> you got to know who we are. You got to know that, you know, how does, how does what your idea is match to our charter, our mission, our root history, why we exist. Do you have uh, some uh, way to partner with us that gives us a shared vision, shared with our fundamental premise, our goals, data that we've gathered that we think, you know, this is an area where we're going, this is what we'd like to do. Uh, we've vetted those things out pretty good as an organization, and many funders have already done this as well. They have a good idea, they've got a strong mission, so, uh, we like you to know that we do have an idea of what we'd like to see happen. We also have an, account, uh, an obligation for accountability, foundations do. <coughs> uh, you know, there are government regulations. Uh, there's different kinds of foundations. There's corporate foundations. There's private foundations. There's uh, public, public charities. And uh, the IRS has different regulations for each of those, so we can't always fund everything. I mean, there's certain things that we can fund in a certain way. Some foundations, like, say, El Paso Community Foundation, they handle multiple endowments. So if you say, you know, do you have an endowment out there for sick cats? And they say, sure, yeah, we do. And as a matter of fact, we can give you $1,000 a year for a sick cat. Great. Somebody thought that was important, and they put a charter in there that said, this is what we want those funds to go to. So uh, we then, that's outside of the, but when we de develop that chart, the IRS comes back and says, your bylaws say you're supposed to be giving funds for this. Is that what you're doing? 
And so we're accountable. We have audits annually, and we have to report to the government. And it's because this is a private foundation, it's a public entity, 501c3, you get to see those records. They're available to you. Uh, and then, of course, we're accountable to the community served. So if within our charter we're saying we serve the Paso Norte region, uh, why would we be funding something in, I don't know, Santiago, Chile? Well, we probably wouldn't be, we'd, or we'd have to make a good idea for it. We also like, and I don't know why it's doing that. Uh, <coughs> we also uh, uh, promote open communication. We like to be involved. We like to be a part of things. Even most funders that, I, uh, that I've encountered, even family foundations, uh, they want a phone call every so often. You know, you, you, you got a grant a, a, a year ago and they haven't heard from you. They, they kind of feel hurt, like, you know, well, this was kind of a partnership. You know, we thought it was important, so did you. Let's, let's stay in communication. <coughs> We like easy to understand grant making. I mean, we, we're not out there. Ultimately, we have a board that we're accountable to, and, and most foundations have that. They, uh, so because it's a board and because they're diverse folk, they come from a range of uh, different uh, professions. So you know, explaining a, a, a research project that maybe is working on HIV prevention and the route that you're taking to, to address this is through education for children and youth. Well, that's starting to get really complex. And so if you go in there and say, this group wants a half a million dollars to do this, and it takes three pages of explanation to get it across, many times the board will say, I, I don't get it. You know, I don't get it. So for us, it's a little easier to say, let's, let's try and break this down so that we can all understand it and communicate it in a place where folks can get what we're doing. And new ideas are always well received. I think one of the things that foundation's roles are in, in a in a community, in, in a region, in a service region, is to look at that innovation, show that it works, and maybe take that to the next level for a systemic change. So you may be coming to a foundation and saying, you know, we've never tried this before, but we think it'll work. That's, wow, let's, let's think about it. Let's think about how we can do that. Uh, you know, those programs that work, that maybe it's been with the government, uh, been running for 20 years, and it's been defunded. Uh, you're not likely to get good support from a foundation to come back and say, yeah, let's activate that program again. They're going to ask, why did it get defunded by the government in the first place? And so there's a lot of those kind of questions that come up. But uh, you know, even if you're taking a variation of that kind of program and moving that forward, uh, that's a new idea. So let's think about how best to do that and why, why would we do it. We want you to know that we like to have timely tur proposal turnaround. So when you submit a proposal to the foundation, we want to get an answer back to you. We really don't want folks to be held out there. We know you worked hard on those proposals. We know you, uh, you really did your homework on them. And uh, you know, we don't want you waiting. I know that there's some foundations that have eight month, nine month turnarounds for, for grants. Most times those are for multi-year commitments. And so they really have to vet that through processing and, and, and uh, and review teams and all that, and that takes time. They have to go do site visiting and all that. But even when it's that, that degree of review, they really do want to get an answer back to you. The, the, the last thing any program officer would want is to be sitting there telling you, you know, it's coming. You know, we'll get to you in a year or two. We'll tell you whether or not we thought we'd fund it. No, we, we like to try and get these things out. And part of the principles and practices of effective grant making uh, are that we can be respectful of those who have submitted a proposal. And so we do want to turn these things around pretty quick. <coughs> we try to develop a clear and unbiased review process for every one of our uh, uh, calls for proposals. A lot of folks in here, I'm looking at them, and uh, you've either been on the side of uh, being part of a technical support team or an advisory team or a reviewer, maybe, with the foundation. Uh, and, and what we do is we try to find folks from the community, but we also try to find folks from out of town. We're looking for uh, expertise in a specific area to give respect to every one of those proposals to say, somebody worked really hard on this idea. Let's really vet it out and ask her all these questions and see if it's viable. It, it's, for us, we hope it's an added value that give, that's, that's given back to the, the folks that, that, that have it, that uh, submitted their proposal. Um, the uh, uh, one other thing around uh, uh, those um, review processes is that uh, you may be surprised that uh, you know when we had say Center for Border Health Research, I'll I'll look at that one. 
there were times we got a, a proposal for, a, I don't know, I, I think it was a, something to do with rabid dogs, but it was really an off-the-wall kind of project. And so we went out and searched the country and searched internationally to find folks who could look at this proposal and were experts. And we said, let's send this proposal to an expert and have them give us, you know, is this going to work? And those recommendations come back. And uh, there, and most times we're able to share those recommendations and say, look, this is why it doesn't work. Is, is this something that you agree with? And all that. It's, it's, it's really an interactive process there. Um, so uh, we do spend time and respect with every one of these proposals. We don't uh, sit around and, and wait. And I guess I don't see Joe Tamaka in the room anymore. He'll say. So those other four days of the week, I'm, I'm not just sitting around <laughs> waiting this. <laughs> um, <coughs> we have a clear definition of our funding restrictions. Our charter says certain things, and there's good reasons why we do it. And I'm always happy to answer those questions. For instance, with Paso Norte, uh, we don't fund biomedical research. We don't fund uh, general operating costs. We don't fund uh, bricks and mortar. There are good reasons for each of those. So we can go over those if you like. Uh, we also offer personal assistance. And we even encourage it. One of the things that, that uh, I've seen happen that's disappointing to me is uh, we release a call for proposals, have a grants workshop, and say, as a matter of fact, most of our proposals, almost all of them, say, you are encouraged to contact the program officer to discuss the RFP. We'll also give you some things like a, a strategic plan. We'll say, here's the strategic plan that we pass by our board, and this is the reason why we want to call for this kind of proposal. And it, you know. There's instructions in there that tell you, you know, these are the things we're going to ask for. These are the things we're going to be asking if you've addressed in your proposal. And so if you didn't follow those instructions, it's going to be very difficult for us to vet that through a reviewer. Sometimes we'll have to say internally, and we do read them, and say, is this worth sending out for review? I mean, it, they didn't even put the cover sheet on it. They didn't put the font in the right form. They didn't address the concern that we had. Uh, they don't even acknowledge that they have a match to our mission or our, our, our vision for what we're doing. And maybe they didn't even uh, uh, acknowledge that their target population, some folks say, well, our target population is the region. Say, well, you're going to address the whole region with a $100,000 request? It's, <laughs> it's pretty tough. So, so that's, that's kind of uh, what funders want to know and, and what, uh, what funders want you to know. And really, I. I I've been working with Paso Norte Health Foundation almost since its inception. Actually, I was on the ship that came over from Providence Hospital. I was a nurse by trade in that hospital, but I worked in a lot of different areas of hospital administration over there. I did some risk management. I did some customer service, billing, uh, uh, accounting, a little bit of everything in there. And, um, you know, when we sold the hospital and, and it, it came over and the, the vision was set for this organization, there was a lot of people who didn't like it. They didn't like it. And uh, as we go forward, uh, I think folks are seeing a, 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 <coughs> a better, in a better light that this is a beautiful gift to this community. And if it hadn't been done, we wouldn't have that hospital still there. It'd probably be much like Hotel Dew, which some of you don't remember Hotel Dew. It was over there. It's kind of like this empty lot now. <laughs> well, let's talk a little bit about Paso Norte Health Foundation. <coughs> The mission statement of the foundation is that we promote health and prevent disease in the region through leadership in health education, research, and advocacy. Why health promotion and prevention? Well, you know, if, if we see what's being spent on medical services, of course, I'm pulling this out, but we see behaviors and environment and then prevention is down here. Well, you know, that's one of the things that we've been harping on since 1995 when we were formed is that, you know, we've got to start moving in this direction of having people have a better quality of life and not end up too early into, those, into the healthcare system. I, I'm, I'm respectful of the healthcare system. I mean, I, I think that you know, we have a lot of troubles there, but still, it's our healthcare system. And, and in a lot of ways, it is one of the best in the, in the world. Uh, but you know, when we look at folks learning how to prevent things and, 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 and get to a point where they can really concentrate on having a good quality of life, that's a, that's a wise investment. <coughs> We do know that there's a su substantial return to that on that investment. And one of the examples, of course, is uh, prevention for a healthy America issue. 
$10 investment per person uh, in programs to increase physical activity, improve nutrition, prevent tobacco use could save the country more than $16 billion in annual health care costs within five years. Those are projections. They're, they're pretty well founded. Uh, and so, you know, that translates to about a dollar invested in community-based prevention returns to 5.6. And in 1995, our founding board knew this. Uh, they knew that a, a, a $1 investment in prevention could likely yield a $10 return in quality of life in the community. So while the resources of the foundation are fairly small in their outflows, standing ground and using those as catalysts to develop a change in this community, it's a wise investment. And that's why we, that's why we stay, stick with health promotion disease prevention. The Paso Norte region, <coughs> as defined by the Paso Norte Health Foundation, uh, covers Doña Ana, Otero, and Luna counties. Now, we added Luna County in 2008. And there were a lot of reasons for us to do that. We had a lot of programs that were going on in Doña Ana County, and they would kind of come up to the line. You know, so, like, say, uh, Ben Archer Health Center may have been a grantee at one time, and they do programs in... Uh, Doniana County and they also do some in Luna County and they say well we have this great program and we're saying well our service region says you can't do it in Luna County for good reason but demographics number of people to be served and uh, the ability to get to folks we felt that it was a wise move to put Luna County in there we also serve El Paso and Hudspeth counties <coughs> in Texas and Ciudad Juarez Mexico uh, it's funny as uh, Around the country, we're known as an international funder. We get a lot of calls from folks who ask, how do you do international funding? We want to do international funding. We're like, well, you know, it's, it's funny. We're not necessarily an international funder that can do funding like to Africa or like, like Gates stuff. But, but they like our RFPs. They like the, the fact that we are conscious of the culture of the area, that we embrace the, uh, the ability for the area to communicate back to us. You know, we'll take a proposal in, in Spanish and we'll have it translated so that we can ensure that uh, reviewers will review it in, in, in the language that they can understand. But also, when, when the programs are developed, that they're developed by folks that, that, uh, that understand the community that they're, being, that they're serving. So uh, there are some things that we hope we've, we've, uh, we've educated folks around the world with uh, through some of these programs and some of these networks where we've talked about how successes as a community and working internationally uh, can develop really great relationships. <coughs> That's our region. Of course, I w went over a little bit of the background of the foundation, established in 1995 by the state of the hospital, one of the largest private foundations on the U.S.-Mexico border. I think the reason that I, I want to keep, uh, some of you have seen some of this presentation before, and I think it's important to, to recognize that you know, being one of the, the major funders in this community, it puts a lot of responsibility on its program staff to help you find other resources. Because an investment from this foundation should yield uh, whether it's some kind of added value. It shouldn't just be the grant because what you've heard before this morning was lots of foundations are looking at primarily giving you funding for something. And it's, it's not going to fund everything for you, and we're not going to be your end all be all uh, resource. So we also have to try and mutually protect that investment. And so we also work out uh, really hard at trying to find other resources to bring them to this community for you all to prosper. We made our first grants in 1997 and have committed about $100 million. We're at, a, we're at $100 million now, and we've worked with over 270 organizations in this region. Uh, in 2007, we did a, a review, and the initial uh, uh, strategic plan for the foundation was in 1995, and we had some reflection and review in 2007 and launched a new strategic framework. <coughs> and the uh, goal areas that we're currently working with uh, well, let's talk about the priorities. We wanted to address the needs of underserved children and youth in the region. This is kind of, with all due respect to this, this priority, I think it's, it's, it's an important priority. And we understand that the priority to address children and youth doesn't mean that we give funding directly to the children and youth. I mean, there, you know, there's a so sociologic model here that we're having to talk about. And so older adult health is just as important to a family and social environment as it is and has an impact on children and youth. So we understand that. So I think sometimes when we go out and say, we have an emphasis on children and youth for the next three to five years, our strategic framework is doing that. What we're trying to say is that we're looking at this generation that we can most have an impact on and perhaps grow this community uh, to have a, a healthier quality of life through, through impact on this, this generation. 
So uh, we are going to work to lead efforts to improve health and wellness. And <coughs> we work hard to convene and inform policymakers uh, and opinion leaders regarding important health and wellness issues. Our health goals, uh, the first goal is children and youth will be physically active and have a proper weight and healthy nutrition, uh, 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 proper nutrition, healthy weight for a strong body. Um, goal number two, uh, tobacco, alcohol, and illicit drug use uh, will be eliminated among adolescents. That's, that's a pretty tough, tough call, but we, we hope to keep going through. We have some good uh, programming working through there. I'm not going to go through the detail. We can come back and look at that as we go forward. Goal three, children, youth, and families will have access to health care, including access to mental health services. This was a big change in 2007 for the foundation and one that we really have walked the line on. Uh, we still do not fund illness treatment services. The foundation's charter was one that said, for one reason, uh, there was a strong no compete clause signed in, uh, in, uh, in the year when we first started with this, uh, with this move. When, when Tenet Corporation purchased Providence Hospital, they purchased the rights to Providence Hospital as a whole, including the name and all of that. So the foundation, had a five-year no-compete clause. We couldn't do anything in the realm of healthcare that would be competitive with that uh, healthcare system that we just uh, sold. So, uh, of course, the charter didn't want us to. The, basically, what the board was saying at that time was, let's keep people out of that hospital for as long as possible. You know, let's, let's keep them focused on uh, health promotion and disease prevention. This line has us really walking and addressing a, a concern that people are not able to access health services in a timely fashion. So we're really investigating approaches to policy, approaches that will help us with affordability, availability, and acceptability of services. <coughs> Goal four, children, youth, and families will grow up in a he healthy family and social environment. Uh, this is kind of a catch-all goal. It, it looks like it, and it is. There's a lot of things that we want to do, but one of the most important things is that you've got to remain flexible to the community's needs. And so the board has vetted this out on a consistent basis. As a matter of fact, we had a board retreat uh, January of this year, January 20th, and uh, we had a strong debate on whether or not we should have more directed, uh, a more directed statement under this goal. And uh, the, the consensus was, no, let's leave it open because we want to have that flexibility to hear out new ideas that will help improve this community. Uh, leadership excellence is vital to coordinating and advocating for policy solutions. Uh, many foundations, similar to Paso Norte Health Foundation, have been looking at policy as an approach to sustaining uh, 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 good, healthful uh, uh, environments. And so we really are moving in that direction. Uh, we had a stake in the recent resolution that went through at the, at the city of El Paso and Socorro. And it's similar to what we've done in the past with the successes that uh, in supporting uh, uh, tobacco control with the smoke-free ordinance. Uh, some years back, we used that similar model. And there was a good readiness for this right now. And so it's a great opportunity. Of course, that's the starting point, because once you've got the resolution going, now you've got questions on how you're going to take action with the resolution. What's it going to be interpreted to say? How is the city going to make changes? That's an example of some of the uh, areas that we're wanting to delve deeper into. You may not have seen us for, uh, from 2008 through 2009, and there's a good reason for that. Uh, around mid-2007, we were standing about $220 million in our corpus, and the foundation is set up to run into perpetuity, which means that it's supposed to be here for generations to come. We're not going to... Uh, and the, the way you do that is not to spend the original corpus or the original body of funds that was provided to this community. We provide a percentage of those resources out every year. It's about 5%. <clears throat> so if you're thinking between the realm of 130 million to 200 million, 200 million, about 10 million out the door every year, 130 million, about 6.5 million out every year. A significant drop. When you're poised to give out 10 million and you suddenly drop to 6.5, uh, what this foundation did, some foundations actually will say, let's just cut program staff and programs with them. This foundation didn't. What we said was, let's honor commitments that were put in place because that is what's, what should be. It, it, you know, these folks have put their lives out and they're, they're saying, this is what we want to do, and we've given them a commitment. 
let's honor those commitments. So whether it was through negotiation or things, but you saw some, some projects close out. And so many of you might have seen me and giving bad news. You know, you may have been, I may have been an agency going, you know what, you're not going to get another grant this year. I'm like, why? Well, you know, we've been funding this program for seven years, and we're not making new commitments right now. Your commitment ended. There were commitments that continued. So we maintained those commitments through this period of time. And it was a tough time for everybody. But, uh, you know, what, what that did was it allowed our investment committee, which we have a pretty wise investment committee, to really take that drop, $130 million. Didn't mean that our assets were bad. It just meant that the valuation of those assets were, were low. So you can see in 2009, now you can't see these numbers, but 180 million is kind of our marker. If I went through for 15 years, you'd see uh, us standing around 180 million on average. <coughs> 130 in 2008, by 2009, we had about 170 million. Uh, as of the end of December, we're back up close to 200 million again. And that presents a great opportunity because many of the commitments that we made in 2007, 2008 that we're honoring through this time are ending. And new things are coming out. <coughs> Thankfully to our government stimulus, it, it helped us keep this economy running. And you know, uh, I don't know where this money is coming from, but I know Ben Bernanke was, was involved in pushing that out. We don't know what the repercussions of that are going to be with the market, but we are standing positive that uh, the stability is there for us to start pushing more towards new commitments. So one of the things that the, uh, I like, I like quotes from, from folks, inspiring quotes. So Henry Ford, you know, the, the Ford Foundation stuff, he, he really did, uh, you know, look at highest use of capital is not to make more money, but to make money do more for the betterment of life. Ultimately, when we look at how much we can make off of the 220 million, folks have said, why don't you just buy something? Why don't you just, like, build a hospital or do something great like that? Just use the whole ball of wax and do it but really it, it's a wiser investment to do what we're we're trying to do right now and, and you know some of you may say that's not that's not true we can talk about it so for 2011 and beyond uh, you'll, you'll see us have a stronger presence in the policy arenas definitely but most importantly you'll see some new calls for proposals new opportunities for funding so much of the information that you have right now is going to be timely you're going to be able to reflect back and say those presentations that these folks gave, they're going to be really helpful. We're looking at developing a leadership program. Uh, there's a lot of folks uh, retiring out of executive director positions and, uh, and, and other areas and, and trying to get folks to uh, move forward and have a base of knowledge of health and what community health is. We're looking at uh, developing a leadership pro program around there. And we're also looking at sharing findings. We've got some findings from the past couple of years, and we're starting to see data come back from the evaluations of those programs. So uh, watch our website. Look for stuff. We will be putting out some, f some, uh, some stuff. Let me go back one. So ultimately, the foundation's premise right now is that all people deserve good health. And the foundation's role is to lead, fund, promote, lev and leverage opportunities to ensure that all people in the Paso Norte region achieve good health. I like to say it. So what makes a great grant? Communication, coordination, and collaboration. Eduardo Sanchez is one of our board members. He was a former commissioner for health. But I like this alliteration that he used, communication, coordination, and collaboration. It's pretty deep. But really, you know, it is, it is what it is. It's, it's telling you that it's important for us to stay in communication. It's important for us to coordinate with the partners in the community. And it's important for us to collaborate so that we're not doing uh, uh, or inappropriately duplicating efforts, that we all are really maximizing resources. This community doesn't have a whole lot of resources, and so we have to be creative and we have to be resourceful. So that's what makes a great proposal. I mean, a great grant. Excuse me. So how do you partner with a funder? Will you contact them, learn about them, talk to them. I want to talk to you. Come visit me. And I'll tell you, I put that offer out, and I'll have maybe one or two folks come in, and lo and behold, the ones who write the best grant proposals are the folks that come in and say, what did you really mean when you said that in the RFP? And I'm like, well, you know, the request for proposals was written that way because. And they have a better idea of what to write about. You know? and, and, and my role is to be the liaison for the foundation. So I'm there to help you and tell you, this is what I'm likely going to have to present to our board. So if you can help me help you, we'll have a better relationship there. I appreciate your time.
Um, any questions? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.